Most people are, by definition, average. In fact, we all have some average qualities about us. Average height, perhaps. Average weight. Average IQ. Average ambition. On the other hand, we all possess some exceptional qualities as well. Special talents which are ours and ours alone. The combination of average and exceptional qualities varies wildly among us. But, despite the various combinations, most people by definition, achieve only average results with their lives. We'll refer to this later as wallowing in the mediocrity mode. It's ironic and a little sad that while many people enjoy watching another try to succeed, few enjoy witnessing his actual success. There exists, in other words, something known as the mediocrity barrier, an obstacle as real and as formidable as a brick wall. The mediocrity barrier represents the resentment others feel toward us as we not only strive for, but actually achieve the goals we have established. Busting through that barrier is a difficult task. It is the point at which we must be so completely intent upon what we are doing, so completely reliant upon ourselves and not others as our motivating source, that we can break through the barrier without seeking the approval of or being deterred by the disapproval of others. It is, as the old adage provides, when we suffer setbacks while striving for our goals, we shouldn't tell other people our problems. Eighty percent of them don't care, and the other twenty percent are actually glad. This cassette is devoted to a nifty mathematical formula designed to help each of us evaluate the extent to which we have achieved our individual potential. It is designed as a tool to help us bust through the mediocrity barrier by permitting us to isolate and examine those parts of our existence where we're strong and those parts of our existence where we need improvement. The formula is not a technique by which we can or should pass judgment upon the relative success of others. It measures us individually only against our own potential and more specifically against our own perception of our individual potential. I recommend that you find a pocket calculator to help you conduct the mathematical exercises contained in this cassette. The calculator isn't essential, but you'll find it very convenient. When fixing values for the various components of the equation, take time to seriously consider each one. This is a private exercise for your use and your eyes only. It is a tool, not a final verdict regarding your self-worth. Most of us who participate in the exercise discover that there is substantial room for improvement in one or more areas of our lives. Because the areas positively or negatively reinforce each other, a minor adjustment in one mini-environment will cause a substantial increase in our total success environment. Our purpose is to evaluate that success environment to see how we rate on a numerical scale which extends from 1 to 243. Remember, theoretically, a man who sells pencils on the street corner may be a success, while a millionaire may be a failure. The difference is the extent to which each individual has used the potential that he has. All men may have been created equal, but God didn't deal all the cards from the same deck. What may be an enormous accomplishment for one man may require little or no effort by another. The purpose of this formula is to measure our success, not against the success of others, but relative only to our own potential as we personally perceive it. Please take a moment to read the appendix in your workbook. Examine the case formula. SE equals I times O times H times W, the product of which is multiplied by Y. Go ahead and write the formula down where you can keep an eye on it. 
using it and the spaces provided in the appendix, we'll work the equation together. The case formula involves simple multiplication. A value of from 1 to 3 is assigned to each letter on the right side of the equation. These values are then multiplied by each other to determine the ultimate value of SE on the left side of the equation. Let's define our terms before we go any farther. SE is our success environment. It is the total picture and the ultimate environment in which we conduct our lives. I, O, H, and W are the four mini environments that help comprise our total success environment. I is our inside mini environment. It is the way we think, our attitudes, emotions, and logic. O is our outside mini environment. It is the way we dress and our physical demeanor. It reflects our general condition of health and fitness and our grooming. H is our home mini environment. It represents our domestic existence and the extent to which we prevent outside pressures from permeating our inner domestic sanctum. W is our work mini environment. It represents the way we pursue our livelihood and the efficiency with which we conduct ourselves. It is the manner in which we relate to others while in pursuit of monetary and professional goals. Y is the Y factor. It is the average extent to which we control our conduct in our four many environments. We'll work the equation in three steps. First, we'll fix the values for I, O, H, and W and then we'll attain our mini environment product by multiplying those values by each other. Next, we'll fix a value for Y and determine our average Y for all four mini environments. Finally, we will see how our average Y factor and our mini environment product relate to one another in creating our total success environment. To each of the four mini environments, we assign a value of from 1 to 3, depending upon how satisfied you are personally with your existence in each environment. You may use, and in fact I recommend that you use, decimals to depict, as exactly as you can, the extent to which you are satisfied with each mini environment. In no event, however, should you assign a value of less than one to any mini environment, and in no event should you assign a value of more than three to any mini environment. We evaluate I, O, H, and W as follows. Three is a totally acceptable environment. There is no substantial room for improvement. To assign a value of three to any mini environment, you should be totally satisfied with all aspects of your existence within that environment. Two is a moderately acceptable environment. Here there is moderate room for improvement, and although you are generally satisfied with your existence within this environment, you see room for improvement. One is a totally unacceptable environment. To assign a one rating to any mini environment, you should be totally dissatisfied with your existence within this particular environment. Substantial improvement must be needed. Between the values of one, two, and three, you may utilize decimals to depict as exactly as possible the current rating you give to any particular environment. For example, when evaluating your home mini environment, you may conclude that it is at least moderately acceptable, but not entirely perfect. Therefore, you may assign it a value of 2.5. Similarly, when evaluating your work mini environment, you may decide that it is basically unacceptable, but there are at least a few aspects that you find moderately acceptable, and might therefore assign a rating to your work mini environment of 1.2. Only you can decide what rating each mini environment deserves. It's important to note that these are current ratings. They should not reflect the extent to which you were satisfied with each environment, say, a month ago, and should not reflect the extent to which you expect to be satisfied, say, a month from now. 
It is the degree to which you are currently satisfied with each mini environment that is important. Let's proceed to assign values to each of your four mini environments. Remember, this formula is a tool for your personal use. Take the time to be honest with yourself. Proceed now to fill in the blanks in paragraphs A, B, C, and D on the first page of your appendix. Ready? Turn off your cassette and begin. Having fixed our values, we may now insert them in the right side of our equation. Fill in the blanks near the bottom of page one of the appendix, inserting the ratings that you gave to each mini environment within the parentheses. Next, multiply the ratings by each other to determine your mini environment product and complete the bottom line on page one of the appendix. That is your mini environment product. Let's take an example to make sure you're on the right track. Assume I am completely average and that I find all four of my mini environments to be moderately acceptable. I therefore assign a value of two to each mini environment. Next, I insert each rating into the case formula as follows. SE equals two times two times two times two, the product of which is multiplied by Y. Therefore, my mini environment product is 16. I may therefore express my case formula thus far as follows. SE equals 16 times Y. Now for some bitter truth. Did you ever have the feeling that others controlled the way you thought without your permission? That you spent your time worrying about other people's problems rather than your own? that you were not in control of all the things upon which you were forced to concentrate? If so, why were other people able to control your inside mini-environment? Because you let them. Did you ever have the feeling that your outside mini-environment was being controlled by someone else, perhaps because others caused you to eat too much, or smoke too much, or drink too much, or not take the time to maintain some degree of physical fitness? If so, why were others able to control your outside mini-environment? Because you let them. Did you ever have the feeling that someone else controlled your home mini-environment? Not through the type of control we all abdicate in an effort to maintain a mutual existence with a spouse or family, but through the kind of control that caused you to think and act and feel in a manner inconsistent with your own desires an overbearing spouse, perhaps, or children who are rude and inconsiderate, family members who generally tend to defeat the very purpose of home as a source of security and love? And if so, why were those others able to control your home mini-environment? Because you let them. Did you ever have the feeling that others controlled your destiny at work? perhaps by holding you back, perhaps by consuming enormous amounts of your time on details better left to someone else, or perhaps through office politics, or through a dozen other techniques? If so, why were others able to control your work mini-environment? Because you let them. It is this series of whys that prompts us to call the average extent to which you control your conduct within your four mini environments the Y factor. The Y factor represents the average extent to which you take responsibility for and seize control of your own destiny in each of the four mini environments. We could have gotten fancy and not averaged the Y factors in each of our four mini-environments to find one average Y that we use in the equation. Instead, we could have conducted a series of complex multiplications to show how each mini-environment is profoundly affected by the extent of control we exert over it. But instead, we stuck with simplicity, or as near simplicity as possible, by dealing with just one average Y factor which represents the average extent to which you control your conduct within your four mini-environments. 
During this cassette program, we have repeated time and time again the importance of accepting responsibility for our conduct. The why factor reflects the importance of such acceptance. It compels us to recognize that if we are not in control of any particular mini-environment, it is only because at some previous point we abdicated control to someone else. It's also important that we distinguish between deliberate and unintentional abdication of control. In marriage, for example, we deliberately abdicate some measure of control over our existence in order to create the institution. But consider the difference between these two examples. You're sitting in front of the TV with your spouse late one evening. Your spouse turns to you and says, Dear, I forgot to pick up bread for breakfast. Let's run down to the store and get some. Now consider the second scenario. You're seated in front of the television with your spouse late one evening. Your spouse turns to you and says, I forgot to pick up bread for breakfast. Go get some. In the first example, abdication of control is deliberate and joint. There is a sense of team effort, of cooperation, of understanding that the spouses work together toward their mutual advantage. In the second example, there is no deliberate abdication of control. The abdication is implied by the forced authority of one person over the other. Similarly, at work, we may deliberately abdicate control as part and parcel of our obligation to our employer to join the team. But there is a vast difference between accepting a role as a team player and undeliberately permitting others at work to relegate us to roles we do not want to accept. With all this in mind, let's proceed with our equation and determine a rating for your personal Y factor. Now examine page two of your appendix. In each of our four mini-environments, we will fix a value for Y, much as we did in evaluating our degree of satisfaction with each mini-environment. Y is assessed on a value of from 1 to 3 as follows. A Y rating of 3 indicates that you are totally in control of this environment. You permit others to substantially affect your behavior only upon your deliberate and express approval. A Y rating of 2 indicates that you usually control your conduct in this environment, but occasionally permit others to control your behavior without your deliberate and express approval. A Y rating of 1 indicates that you do not control your conduct in this environment and always permit others to do so without your deliberate and express approval. As we did in assessing your degree of satisfaction with each of your four mini-environments, I encourage you to use decimals in fixing your Y ratings. For example, in determining the extent to which you control your outside mini-environment, you may decide that you do usually control your conduct within the environment, but that there are too many instances where others control it without your deliberate and express approval. You might therefore assign a value of 1.5. Similarly, in evaluating your home mini-environment, you may decide that you are usually in control of the environment and frequently are in total control of the environment and therefore might assess a value of, say, 2.7. Please give each Y rating considerable thought and provide as honest an answer as possible to each. Now, Fill in the blanks in paragraphs A through D on page 2 of your appendix. Turn off your cassette and begin. We now want to determine the average extent to which you control your conduct in each of your four mini-environments. To do so, first total the Y ratings that you achieved in paragraphs A, B, C, and D. Again, by way of example, if I was completely average and assigned a Y rating of 2 to each of my four mini-environments, then the total of those figures would be 8. Next, to determine your average Y factor, divide that total by 4 as indicated in the equation on page 2 of the appendix. 
you should now have found your average y factor. For example, using our average manned example, I would have divided my total of 8 by 4 to give me an average y of 2. Now, please fill in the blank on page 2 which says my average y factor equals. We may now express our case formula by inserting the values we have attained for our mini environment product and our average y factor. Use the second to the last formula on page 2 and insert the figures you have attained. For example, if as average man my mini environment product was 16 and my average y factor was 2, my case formula would appear as follows. SE equals 16 times 2. My total success environment, therefore, would be 16 multiplied by 2. Therefore, as average man, my total success environment equals 32. Please conduct the remaining math necessary to find your final answer and complete the last line on page 2. Your equation should now be complete. Congratulations, you have determined your total success environment. Merely assigning a value as a rough estimator of the extent to which we have reached our individual potential as human beings does not do us much good unless we have a model or a context to which we can relate the figure. To provide a useful context, we utilize a model called the case progression chart. The chart is divided into modes and levels of potential. But even before we can utilize the chart, we must first understand and appreciate the very nature of the word success. This completes side one. Please fast forward the tape to the end, then turn the cassette over for side two.